the coronavirus death toll rising. The U.S. now declaring a public health emergency amid this outbreak of the coronavirus across the globe. When I think about the major infectious disease accomplishments in public health in my lifetime, the polio vaccine, the eradication of smallpox, they've saved millions and millions of lives. They took decades to accomplish. If we can stop this in its tracks, that would be a phenomenal accomplishment. By early February, all of the front runners in the race for a vaccine were already off and running. And they were all looking at slightly different approaches, but they were all betting on the horse they knew. You have Oxford and Johnson and Johnson, they're betting on a technology called viral vector technology. With the viral vector approach, scientists take a different virus, like one that might cause a common cold, and they scoop out the guts of that virus and replace it with a little instruction manual. When injected, it coaxes your cells to produce proteins that look like those on the outside of the coronavirus. From there, your immune system mounts a defense. Novavax, a company just outside DC, went with a slightly more traditional approach. One thing we bring to the table is our company had done this for Ebola. We had been very fast. We made a vaccine very similar to what we had here. Then you have Moderna and the German company BioNTech betting on mRNA. These vaccines take genetic material, mRNA, and coat it in a little protective package that is injected into your body. That instructs your cells to start churning out proteins that we would see normally on the surface of the coronavirus. The immune system thinks it's a foreign invader and mounts a defense as though you had actually been attacked by the real virus. This technology allows us to make a completely new vaccine in less than 30 days. We're able to move quickly because our technology has been used in personalized cancer vaccine programs in the past. The mRNA vaccines, we've been investing in for quite some time because you only have to change a tiny little bit to have it make a vaccine. And so that's why it can be done much faster. You needed to get multiple platforms and multiple candidates. You could not put all of your eggs in one basket. Right now, the technology that we have has allowed us to go the fastest that we've ever done. So we need to make sure it's safe and we make needs to make sure it works. That entire process will take at least a year and a year and a half. I thought that was ridiculously optimistic, aspirational. I know that some people are asking us to go faster. Some people are asking us to go slower. We don't hear any of them. We will go with the speed of science. Heartbreak in Italy as over a thousand people have died. We will be suspending all travel from Europe to the United States for the next 30 days. Our phase one study was initially expected to begin in April. We said that's not going to cut it and we moved it in to March. People that sign up for phase one trials are very brave because you're really the guinea pig to see if it's safe. We all felt so helpless at that point, and this was, this was important to me to be able to do something, to, to, to take a risk that others can't. Volunteer Jennifer Holler getting the first injection in Seattle as part of that clinical trial. The only side effect that I had um, was a soreness at the site of injection. I wasn't afraid because I trust science. The day after Moderna launched its phase one trial in humans, that small German company, BioNTech, announced its partnership with Pfizer, which is one of the biggest pharmaceutical companies in the world. Uh, we provide the technology. Uh, Pfizer has the strength to, to execute the clinical trials. I've, I've never seen us working with a partner better than uh, we are working now with BioNTech. And that was very important so that we can be able to deliver. When we started off in March and we understood that this was likely a product that would have to be kept frozen, I mean, what was 
a really cool challenge. Then it was the scale and pace that we had to move in. Around the same time, Johnson & Johnson scientists identified a vaccine candidate that was succeeding in the laboratory. And there was first aha moment that I was called on Friday afternoon by one of my team members. Uh, and she told me, it's working. I was already preparing from a supply chain perspective. I'd already ordered a quarter of a billion vials. New York, the Empire State bracing for the worst. All you needed to do is turn on the news and you'd be reminded by how much every day mattered in terms of lives impacted and lost. So my colleague, Diane Sawyer, had this chance to talk to Kelly Bradshaw, who's a nurse who had witnessed so much. When you've seen someone agonally gasp for air while they have a breathing tube in, it will be burned into my brain and burned into my memory forever. So we saw some of the first data signs that we were gonna see disproportionate impact in particular in communities of color. My friend's name was Jason uh, Marshall Hargrove. Uh, he has succumbed to the COVID-19. He shared a story on how the lady openly coughed on the bus and it went basically nationwide. But for you to get on the bus and cough without covering up your mouth, that, that, that lets me know that some folks don't care. We start seeing it hit the most vulnerable, the elderly, especially in nursing homes. At least 10 nursing homes with patients now testing positive. We have friends, we have family becoming severely ill. In April, I lost my mom. She was in a nursing home, and that was very, very tough. It just reaffirmed my commitment to getting this vaccine so we can stop you know, that kind of thing from happening. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.